Nature is the art. I only imitate that which we have lost to see. For me as an artist, the 52 collection is really special because it forces me to create new work. So it challenges me as an artist to create new work on a weekly basis. But I think what makes it so much more special is the fact that it's a collection of work that run over a year. So it will capture all the seasons that run during a year and it will give ownership to people of the work which was never possible before. For an artist working in nature, you realize that you're part of the cycles of nature. You immediately realize that whatever you do in nature will be taken away by nature. You have to get in a conversation, in a meditation kind of mode with nature while you're working there. The most important thing is that moment that you work in the landscape and creating the work. So the beauty is actually in the fact that the work is not going to last for long. The beauty is in the moment of capturing that moment that you work on site in nature, because that moment will never exist again. At the moment that you finish, you realize you have to make a living and you have to document the work in some way and that in a certain kind of way you have to show to the public what you've actually done. I think for me as a land artist, in the past it was always a case of you make your work and you document it and you as an artist, you own that documentation. And the only way that people can see it if, if you would sell a print or a coffee table book, or you show a film, and that's the way that people can see it. It was always a problem in the sense that the collectors or the people that love my work got the feeling that they never really own the real work because the work exists in nature and it was ephemeral and it was washed away or blown away by nature or taken away by nature. And the only thing that they could have was a documentation of the work. And that never really sell because it, it, it is felt for them as if they don't own the real work. So FanFire was, was created to explore new ways of applying non-fungible tokens and other so-called Web3 technologies, ways in which blockchain is starting to combine with the, with the more conventional World Wide Web. We're creating a system that has digital permanence because the blockchain doesn't forget. You have this network of computers sharing the truth of what's happening between them and that, that doesn't disappear, that creates this permanent record of, of all transactions and all tokens that were ever created. When digital artworks started reaching very high prices at, at auctions and, and suddenly everyone jumped on the bandwagon and started creating and selling these for sometimes uh, terrific amounts. Uh, but at FanFire we, we tried to figure out how do, you, how do you go beyond this hype? How do you create something that wouldn't have been possible prior to the invention of blockchain? And, and one of the artists we found really interesting in this regard was Stratum Ponomava, because Stratum creates a type of art that's really impossible to sell, at least in its, in its original form. So here's an artist, a renowned worldwide, really absolutely brilliant at what he does with creating these natural or these artworks from nature itself using material he finds on the, on the site. And these artworks are often very, very remote. So you don't have an audience that goes out to experience the artwork or to see it or to, to be part of it. And it's really impossible to own. You, you can't own an installation that exists for a day or two or a, or a week or two. And traditionally, an artist like Stradom would have taken some pictures, created photographic versions of the artwork, capture moments of the artwork, and perhaps sell these as, as prints or, or take them into a, a coffee table book. But now suddenly you have, you have a way where you can create digital originals of these temporary, these fleeting artworks and create these as representations of the art itself. 